is a quick overview of what you can do with Lumion and how you can do it. Once you've installed Lumion, click to start it up. A benchmark process will then check the speed of your computer. The results are shown by the bar at the bottom. You'll need a good graphics card to get a great Lumion experience. This computer has an NVIDIA GTX 970 card in it and it performs very well on all the benchmark checks. You can rerun the benchmark if you want to, but we're all set. The news and learning section on the start screen gives you tips and news items. These items update quite often, so if you click on the hardware advice, for example, you'll go to a web page and you can get some tips about it. The first tab at the top is the standard start page with six backgrounds. The second tab has nine pre-made examples. You can load a scene you previously made in Lumion via the third tab. The last tab allows you to import a scene from a hard disk or network. Our language is set to English and we start with a plain empty scene. Hovering above the question mark button, bottom right shows help prompts. There are five icons on the right, build mode, photo mode, video mode, and the recently added panorama mode and file retrieval. There's also a button to adjust the settings and it's useful to get it right for you and your computer. It's quite easy to set up. In build mode, there are four pop-out buttons on the left, weather, landscape, materials, and objects. And that's how you basically access the main functions of Lumion. Under the objects tab, there are different categories and the disk icon allows you to import your own objects, including any architectural models you've designed. I'm importing a new model. It's an FBX file, which is one of the formats that works very well with Lumion. Hovering above the help button again shows you how to move around your scene using the mouse and the keyboard. It uses the computer game convention. The WASD keys move forwards, left, back or right. Q and E move the camera up and down. Hold down the right mouse button and this lets you look around. These icons on the lower menu allow you to move, resize and rotate your object. There's another tab on the menu to help you select objects or reposition the object in relation to the 000 point of the uh, 3D axes in Lumion. Different sliders appear depending on if you choose the move, resize or rotate functions. Now select the materials tab on the left. Hovering your mouse above any material highlights it. If you click it, a menu of different materials pops up. There are four main categories of material nature, indoor, outdoor, and custom. Let's change this concrete wall to brick. Click the brick again to change its properties, scale, relief, gloss, and color. There are also more properties you can tweak. Now this brick looks a bit strange, but we'll fix that later. Now let's add wood to this surface, glass to this surface, Lumion has trademarked pure glass presets developed by the Lumion team and they're available via the outdoor materials tab. You can also change the specific properties of any glass style that you select, adjust the sliders to get the look you want. Or you can apply a custom glass material and again tweak its properties using the sliders. For example, reflectivity, opacity, glossiness, frostiness, relief and scale. This is basically allowing you to tap into the power of the pure glass engine and fine tune the settings to make the glass look just the way you want it. It can take a while to get your materials looking right. So if you want to load a set you created earlier, you can do it like this. You can also save a material set in the same way. Now this is a very handy way to save a lot of time in your workflow when you transfer materials uh, set and their settings from one project to the next. Second tab on the left gets you the landscape functions and the bottom menu now offers different options. Let's switch on the grass. You can adjust it with the sliders, size, height and wildness. You can adjust the generic style of landscape, like this. Paint it and you can adjust the brush size and speed uh, for any of these landscape actions. You can add in an ocean with one click. If it fits your model, of course, it doesn't really help here, so we'll switch it off again. You can add a water plane like this, and that's really handy for lakes, for example, or in this case, a swimming pool. And you can sculpt the surrounding landscape like this. So we're gonna use the sculpt tool to dig out the swimming pool. 
The top button on the left gets us the weather options. Let's change the sun direction and height using the dials bottom left. We can adjust the amount of cloud too and the cloud type. The lowest button on the left gets us back to the objects tab and we can start to build our scene with the various object categories. Click the interior objects in this case and then move inside. There's a lot of objects to choose from in the library and just click through the category tabs at the top to find what you're looking for. You can also save favorites by clicking the star at the top of any of the objects. Let's select a carpet, click on it to choose its color and add a table and some chairs and adjust their colors too. Another alternative is to use the mask placement function. This is very useful to build a scene quickly. Click it and draw a line. The menu pops up for you to adjust spacing, rotation, number and offsets. You can add other objects to the mask placement path and they will be randomly added to the path. This second object tab changes the menu to be better able to select specific objects according to their categories. It's handy when you've got a lot of objects in your scene. You can always edit individual properties by clicking the pencil icon. The pencil always means editing in Lumion, by the way. If you move the mouse to the top of the screen, layers will appear. You can see I'm switching on the layers. This is, of course, a scene built earlier, but the layers were hidden up until now. You can have up to 20 layers, and it's good practice to assign different object types to different layers. For example, people to one layer, cars to another layer. Switching back to the empty scene, Selecting our main object, we'll now reload an amended version of the design. The reload is one of the best uh, functions in Lumion, as you can very easily and very quickly update your scene with amended models from your modeling software. This makes viewing a design iteration very fast and very easy. The new version comes with some terrain added, and I'm marking it as landscape so that it functions as landscape uh, within Lumion. Clicking the spanner icon, and then our object opens up a context menu. You have three sub-menus then, selection, transformation, and extra. These help perform some different actions on the object. Marcus Terrain is a very handy one for matching your model to your Lumion Terrain. You can also see that marking the imported model as Terrain allows you to use the Lumion landscape functions on it, for example, painting. The camera icon on the right gets us to photo mode. This is where you can create still shots of the scene that you've built. The interface changes a bit and you can move around your scene and save the locations you move to by clicking above the camera slots at the bottom of the screen. There's room for 100 locations and clicking on any stored location puts the camera back in that spot in your scene. The dots at the bottom get you access to the full 100 locations and there are 10 locations visible at any one time. The star button top left is the doorway to Lumion's many effects. It's a very important doorway. Every still shot needs something to make it sparkle, and Lumion's effects are how you express your own style. There are different effects categories like weather, objects, camera, style, artistic, and sketch, and you can use them in pretty much any combination, and there are almost endless possibilities when you start to do that. We've just selected a sketch effect. The view immediately changes, and the effect Sliders are also visible in the top left. You can adjust the sliders until it looks uh, just the way you want it to. And remember, this is just one effect. You can use this one together with lots of others to create the look you want. Moving to another shot and the world effects category, add the sun. With this effect, you can change the height, direction, brightness, and the size of the sun. These effects are applied only to that specific shot, remember. We'll add another world effect, reflections. It's a very useful effect. Lumion invented a concept called speed ray reflections. It's a new technology specific to Lumion. Switching it on improves reflections without much effect on computer performance. The pencil allows you to add reflection planes, which is different from speed ray reflections, and you can add these to specific surfaces. These are perfect reflections, but they have a bigger effect on computer performance. They are very important for large reflected surfaces though, but because of their effect on performance, you're limited to adding 10. I've just skipped forward, having added a number of effects to each still Im image. We'll render this last one with the hyperlight switched on. Hyperlight is again another 
technology developed specifically by Lumion and for Lumion. And this is the effect of Hyperlight. Switching to the movie mode now by clicking the icon on the lower right. Again, the interface changes and now we we'll record a camera path. A bit like before, you move around your scene clicking the camera icon to store camera locations. The difference now is that Lumion fills in the camera path between the locations to make a movie clip. You can change the speed of the clip with these arrows. Let's create another clip by selecting an empty slot. Now we've got two clips. You can play them back individually or all together. You'll see a vertical line separating the clips when you play them back all together. You can drag and drop to change clip order. Let's add effects like before. I'm switching back to photo mode to show a really neat copy paste trick. By clicking on a still shot you like, click then the spanner at the top, then copy the effects. Switch back to video mode and paste these effects into any selected clip. Play back and see the effects applied. Click the film strip bottom left and the full movie is visible, comprised of three clips. In this one we're going for a conceptual look. This kind of look is handy if your design is in its early concept stage when photorealism won't really help the discussion that you're trying to create. Keyframes are a really powerful way to help you animate effects. Click on the little wave symbol next to the effect slider. A keyframe line will be added to the playback bar. Scrub through the clip to a different point and then click the wave symbol again to add another keyframe. And now you can see that the sun height moves as the clip progresses. Click on the keyframe on the playback bar and use the slider to fine tune the effect. This is a really neat way for example to create a sunset. Clicking on the third clip we have a nighttime busy street. The moving cars were created using the mass move effect. Click on the pencil to edit the effect. You can play back the mass move path to check out how it looks. You can adjust various things like car speed and direction. You can also toggle the people or the cars on and off. Pressing the recalculate button shows you how it looks with the new settings. Now let's render the whole movie by clicking on the clapperboard bottom right. You get a menu which allows you to choose the quality you want. There's a trade-off between quality and render time. 5 star, 30 frames per second, a 1080p resolution is a very high quality output. You will be prompted for a file name and location. In this case, it will take around 33 minutes to render the movie. Render time depends on chosen quality level, the graphics card, and of course the length and the complexity of your movie. This is a brief glimpse of the rendered output. Now let's look at the panorama mode. The interface changes a bit, but the idea is the same. Move around your scene, select locations and label each one. Each location will eventually be rendered as a 360 panorama, either as a virtual reality output for use on a headset or to My Lumion for sharing and viewing online. Notice that you can set the camera to eye level. We now have six locations. We'll paste the effects we copied earlier. Let's first render as a VR output. We'll render the output so that it's suitable for viewing using the gear, VR and Oculus. You can also render the panoramas to My Lumion. This will send an email with a unique link to your online render. This link can then be forwarded to anyone you like. It's rendering to My Lumion now. Fast forwarding, we can now view the renders via the My Lumion website. You can jump between viewpoints by enabling these eye symbols or using the arrows bottom left. Clicking on the settings button in panorama mode takes you to your online management environment. This allows you to view and manage your online projects. I hope you enjoyed this whistle stop tour of Lumion. Now it's time to have fun using it. Enjoy.